All right, so in this lesson, we are going to do some arithmetic with our functions when there's just an x there and we're not given an actual number to plug into the function. And we'll also then find the domain for that. So here's our first example. Um, f of x is the square root of 2x plus 4, and g of x is x minus 5. We're asked to do f plus g of x. So that tells us to do f of x plus g of x, and then they want us to simplify if, if it's possible. Um, f of x is the square root of 2x plus 4. We're going to add to that x minus 5. Now, there is no way for us to simplify that any further because we can't combine things that are under a radical with things that are not under a radical. We can't combine x's with plain numbers. So that's as good as it gets for this one, our simplified answer. For this, although it doesn't look so simple, is the square root of 2x plus 4 plus x minus 5. The next ask for us to find the domain of f plus g of x. So this function that we just created, we're supposed to find the domain. Now you have to take into account the domain of what you came up with, our answer to part a, as well as the domains of our original functions. So our original functions, f of x has some problems with its domain because it's under a radical g of x does not have any problems with its domain, okay? Its domain would be all real numbers, but we have to take into account all restrictions. If we look at our answer to part a again, it has a square root in it, so that causes a problem with our domain because, again, the domain is all possible x values that we can plug in, and we cannot plug in anything that will make the number under that radical negative because negative, you can't take the square root of a negative number and get a real number answer. So, to find our domain, we take whatever was under the radical, in this case 2x plus 4, and it has to be greater than or equal to 0. We solve that, and we find our domain. Okay, so if I subtract 4 from both sides, I get that 2x is greater than negative 4, and finally divide both sides by 2, Okay, so my domain here is that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. To write that in interval notation, you could write it in this notation. I'm perfectly okay with that. But you're going to see interval notation a lot, so it'd be good to get used to. Numbers greater than or equal to negative 2 means we're going from negative 2 to infinity. Okay, to positive infinity. Notice there's a square bracket on the negative 2 because I am including negative 2 in my domain, the equal to, okay, and to infinity. So there is our result and our domain. All right, here is another example. We're given g of x and h of x, and we are asked to do h over g of x. Simplify it, and then find the domain. So first let's do h divided by g of x. So we're going to take our function h of x, divide it by g of x. h of x goes on the top, it's x plus 3. g of x is the function 2 over x. We're supposed to simplify this. Now, we can't have fractions within fractions, so we're going to have to remedy that. Notice this is really just a division problem. We have x plus 3 divided by 2 over x. And remember that when you divided fractions to divide, you inverted or flipped the second fraction and multiplied. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Our bottom fraction, 2 over x, we are going to flip that and multiply it. So we have x over 2. All right. If we multiply that, we get x plus 3 times x all over 2. You can leave it in this form, or if you feel better about going ahead and distributing that, that's perfectly OK. Um, and you would end up with x squared plus 3x over 2. So there is the simplified version of our function, h over g of x. Okay, now we have to find the domain. Now, looking at this function, it's really just a plain old poly polynomial. Our result is just fine. It has no problems with its domain. Um, there's nothing that would make that denominator 0 because there's not an x down there. However, when you find the domain, of functions that have been put together, you have to take into account 
where that where each function came from. So we need to take into account the function for two over x, and the excuse me, the domain for two over x, and the domain for x plus three. Uh, x plus three has no problems. We could plug any number in, and it would be valid. G of x, on the other hand, the two over x. Remember, fractions cannot have a denominator of zero. So this x, the denominator, can't be equal to zero, and that is our domain for our function. Okay, so our domain is, you can either say all real numbers with x not equal to zero or except zero, or you can write it in interval notation, which means we would go from negative infinity to zero and stop there, not including it, so notice that's a parenthesis. And u, that u there means a union, put it together with from zero to infinity. Okay, so in interval notation, this is the way that you write everything except for zero. You cut it out in the middle there. Or you can say it this way, all real numbers except for zero. And again, even though our results didn't have problems with its domain, there was nothing restricting it, we had to go back to the originals that we used and check them, and that g of x did have a problem because it had an x in the denominator, and the denominator of a fraction cannot be zero. All right, here we go. Here is our last question. We have g of x being 2 over x minus 1, and h of x being the square root of x. We're asked to find g times h. So we're going to take g of x times h of x. Okay, uh, well, g of x is 2 over x minus 1, and h of x is the square root of x. Uh, we're multiplying a fraction, so we're going to put this root x over 1, and you multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times the denominator, and here's what we come up with. 2 times the square root of x over x minus 1. Not pretty, but that's really as simplified as it's going to get. Okay, so you can't really cancel x's out because one's in a root, the other's not, and it's added to a subtracted number from it. So there's our function simplified. Now the tricky part, the domain. Okay, so remember, the only time you have trouble with a domain is one of two things. There's a square root or there's a fraction with x in the denominator. We have both of those problems. So let's tackle the x in the denominator first. For our domain, the denominator cannot equal zero. So we take whatever the denominator happens to be. In this case, it's x minus 1. And set it equal to zero temporarily, just to see what number would make the denominator equal zero. And we find that if x is one, then the denominator will be zero. So for our function, the domain is one is not included in a domain because it makes our denominator zero. Now let's tackle that root. So we have two root x. Okay. Well, the problem with square roots is we can't have negatives. So whatever is under there, which is in this case the only thing under the root is x itself, has to be greater than or equal to 0. We would solve that, but really that's already solved. Okay, so let's put these two things together because they combine. Um, the number for x has to be greater than or equal to 0, but it can't equal 1. Okay, so in interval notation, here is the way you would write that. Okay, we start at... 0. It can equal 0, just can't be smaller than that. So we're going to put a square bracket, and we're going to go from 0 to 1, and we're going to stop there, because it can't equal 1. Okay, we put a union, and we're going to include everything from 1 to positive infinity. Notice the rounded brackets, or just the parentheses on the 1, tells me I keep, I'm not including that. So my domain is all numbers greater than or equal to 0, except for 1. And this is how I would write it using interval notation. Okay, so hopefully these help for you to combine uh, functions and to find their domains.